Namaste, viewers. I'm Rekha Rao, an independent researcher in ancient history and archaeology. Today, I would like to present my analysis on some of the Indus Valley seal symbols. The focus is on the very frequently seen fish symbols inscribed in the Indus Valley or the Harappan seals. Starting with the introduction of seals and my approach in understanding the seals, I proceed to the analysis of the variants of fish symbols. Seals are an exclusive symbolic representation of the processes involved in performing yatnas as per Vedas. Hence, the analysis of seal symbols are based on Vedic perspective. I present slide two. I begin with the type of seals, the purpose of seals, and the distribution of seals. Later, I go to the significance of the single horn bull seal. Second point is symbolography in seals. Third point is about fish symbols. There are two varieties. First one is Veena, the fish belly design, its geometry, significance, and variance. Second type is the stylized fish, its geometry, significance, and its variance. Lastly, the symbols of Hotri priest and its variants are discussed. In this valley seals, though tiny, is packed with a lot of history and mystery. Thousands of Harappan seals have been discovered so far, and majority of seals are with the picture of a single horn bull, which is an extensive subject. The Indus seals, also called Harappan seals, are highly sophisticated heritage artifacts, dating as far back as 3,500 years or more. They mirror the religious, social, intellectual excellence of the Indus Valley civilization. The seals are made up of a type of soft stone called steatite, and many are as tiny as three centimeters by three centimeters and weighing nine to 10 grams approximately. They are discovered in the vast expanse of Indus civilization sites, the Harappa of Mahanjadaro and the Northwestern part of India. These with finely executed carvings are the archeological proof of the civilization that existed at least 3,000 years back in the land of Bharat. I present slide three. It's about the types of seals. While observing the hundreds of seal pictures, I could notice they were in three main varieties. First type was majority of seals were with the figure of single horn bull or another animal with symbols inscribed in a line. Secondly, some seals were thematic pictures of some activity depicted without any inscription. And the third type was some seals were with only symbols inscribed without any figures. Of these types, the seals with the presentation of a single horn bull with the structure in front and symbols inscribed on top were in great numbers. Each of the single horn bull seal involves three units that are interlinked. They are the picture of the bull carrying, uh, it's occupying three fourths area of the seal. Secondly, the structure in front of the bull. And thirdly, the symbols inscribed in the remaining quarter part on top. This indicates that bull is like linchpin the significance of which needs to be understood before interpreting the symbols inscribed. In the past, the approach has been to decipher the symbols in isolation and not in connection with the bull and the structure in front. The animal with one horn is identifiable physically as the bull and not a unicorn by the male organ, the hoof structure and the tail. At present slide four, it's about my approach. My research work about the Indus seals started with locating which ancient literary work had the maximum reference to a bull. And the answer was Rig Veda. From Agni, Vrishabha, Agni, you are the bull, is a quote from Rig Veda. Rig Veda has infinite reference to bull, the Vrishabha, as the priest or the most important deity, Agni. 
Carrying forward this concept of Rig Veda, the bull was visualized to be the representation of Hothri trees as described in Rig Veda. The bull figure in all seals invariably has a unique structure in front, which is showed as a slender pillar, a half moon shaped ball, and a square frame peculiarly balanced on the pillar. The bull's mouth was always positioned on top of the square frame structure. The squarish frame on top also showed varying number of miniature squares or rectangular designs with it. Since bull was not depicted to be eating anything from the bin, nor the bin showed any grass or food in it, the alternate function of the head of the bull for its call was considered. This led me to deduce that the structure looking like the bin with a frame always in front of the bull is related to the speech of the priest who was the reciter of mantras, that is the sansas of Vedas, Indiantas. Rigveda Mandala 10.1 is about Gnanam. Uh, Mandala 10.71 is about Gnanam about how the words of objects and speech got evolved. Prachapati, after the creation, gave the names of objects as words. Sages treasured the words, created the language, structured the words in Chandra's meter, and created the Vedic poetry. They disclosed it through their speech to Hothris and other priests. Bull picture is metaphorically used in seals to symbolize the Purohita, the priest who was the well-wisher of society in Vedic period and was also the most important person. Now, focusing on the first picture uh, about the structure in front of the bull, the structure of the half moon shaped bowl balanced on a slender pillar and a square frame on top was deduced to be the graphical representation of the structure of walk. The speech, Depicted, this walk structure is depicted as a slender pillar supporting the ball. The half moon shaped ball containing words is called Vagambrina in Sanskrit. Walk is words, Ambrina means a ball. The knowledge of infinite words were given by deity Prajapati in a mixed form, which were treasured by sages in the Ambrina ball. The square frame above it shows lines with the arrangement of smaller squares. The small squares in each line represent the series of words making the sentences or the lines of the stanzas of Vedic poetry. The smaller squares in varying numbers arranged within each line is connected to the structure of the Chandas pattern, that is the meters of Vedic poetry. A combination of words in varying numbers and varied numbers of lines in a square frame represents the seven meters of Vedic poetry, which the Hothri priest recited. Hence, the entire structure in front of the bull is the structure of literary intricacies of Chanda's pattern of Vedic poetry. Now, the second picture, while attempting to understand the hundreds of symbols in sea pictures, I was amazed to see the picture of a bird altar called Sena Chiti at Chayanyaga in two seals. It was inscribed as a symbol. One of the seals is excavated from Dholavira. I could guess that when a fire altar is presented, the theme of the seal is connected to Yagnas. I could also identify many accessories like the containers called Stalis, Patras, the ladles, and many such articles used only during Vedic Yagna rituals. They are inscribed as symbols in a miniature form. Through constant interlinked references between the seal and the multiple books related to Vedas and ritual dictionaries, I could understand that the seals are related to the rituals of Vedic Yagnas, the performance of which was mandatory in ancient Vedic period. Many seals depicting the figures of deities, priests, episodes of Rig Veda in picture form. They were meant to convey specific information about the Vedic Yagnas, which were the socio-religious practices of 
Vedic age. The Vedic period, which witnessed the peak of poetic skills emerging as Vedas, appeared to be the inspiration for the making of seals. The seals looked more like the archaeological data of the literary compilations of ancient civilization. In other words, the seals are a faithful representation of the contents of Vedas through symbols and nothing appears to be beyond the scope of Vedas. The most significant understanding was that the single horn bull seals showing the three units, the script, the animal and the wax structure in front are interlinked. Hence, the seal has to be analyzed with a holistic approach and not as separate parts. Now, uh, trying to know why are, why are the seals so small? What was the intention behind making the seals so small? The probable answer is they were meant for an average rating level that could be handled with ease. The extreme brevity of symbols two to seven in numbers is an obvious indication that they are not about a script story or language intricacies. They were probably meant to convey specific coded information for people who could gather information from it. Since deities and yadda accessories are amongst the symbols inscribed, it was meant for priests or performers of yadda rituals who were initiated into the field of Vedas and the related rituals. The three by three centimeter size served the intended purpose. The more oversized seals would have been bulky, heavy, and tended to uh, break the stone slabs while carving or transporting them from place to place, or even while storing them. The seals were probably meant only to give some lead information in a coded form about the recitational and ritualistic specifications like the Chandas pattern, the deity invoke, and the accessories used in a yapna. I present slide five. It's about the distribution of seals. A mysterious question was, why so many seals were found in the present Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro areas? Rigveda Mandala 7 gives the details of the battle of Dasharagna fought on the banks of river Ravi. It was called Parushni before. Of the several conflicts encountered between Aryas and Dasyus, the Dasharagna battle described in Rigveda Mandala 7 is significant. Bharata clan was headed by King Sudas. The Arya power involved prominent kings or the chieftains the Brugus, Anus, Drushyus, Purus, Yadus on one side. Rigveda Mandala 7.18 quotes about the Anaryas and Dasyus. It quotes A Pathaso, Balanaso, Ananta, Alinaso, Vishaninaha, Shivasaha. Anaryas and Dasyus were the opposers of Bharata clan. They came together on the other side of river Sindhu. They were called Pakthas, the Bhalanas, Alinas, Vishanins, and the Shivas in Rigveda. Rigveda also mentions about these uh, Dasyus, the Anarya tribes, and the regions to the west of river Sindhu occupied by them. The main difference between the Aryas and Dasyus was the difference in religion. Significantly, a constant reference is made in Rigveda, and the battle was intended to defeat the non followers of Arya Dharma. Aryas of Bharata clan, well protected by deity Indra and Agni, were victorious in the Dasharagna war. The Dasyu force abandoned all their holdings, the forts, and wealth to the Aryas and migrated away from the region. Arya culture was propagated in the acquired land. Vedic rituals and yagnas were performed there by the priestly class. A possible explanation for finding out, for finding of Vedic culture in these areas can be speculated that there were far fewer schools and master priests in the newly occupied regions. 
The seals were used as informative slabs in coded form to be used as a reference. It was used mostly by the upcoming priests and practitioners of Vedic Yagdas for the flawless performance of Vedic rituals. For this reason, the seals were made small, light in weight, so that transportation and storing of it was more accessible. I present slide six for symbol inscriptions. The astonishing features of the tiny seals and symbols are, first point is standardization technique in inscribing the symbol representation within two imaginary lines because the size of seals were small. Secondly, the neatness and refinement in the execution of youthful animal figure and the structure in front of the seal. Third point is the brevity and coded forms of symbols are like a precursor to the post-Vedic Sutra literature. Some symbols are repeatedly used in seals while some are rarely used. The inscribed symbols looking like the script of an unknown language are around 400 or more signs. Some are basic signs to which additional marks were attached. The repetition of similar symbols was also seen in seals, even though signboard of Dolavira depicts repetition of the same symbol. A study of seals revealed that the signs inscribed convey specific information because the script of the language was not yet evolved. The symbols could not be read either as a word or a sentence because they did not show the consistency in appearance or in repetitions. Hence, they may not be a script alphabet and it is hard to find identical seals. Now, trying to understand what is symbolography. The inscriptions on indices are symbolic in their presentation. Chambers Dictionary defines symbolography as the writing of symbolic characters and tracing of symbolic figures. Symbolic means representing ideas through signs, a system of symbols written or represented by custom or convention to represent a theme. Each symbol in the seal has distinctive data and does not link to the preceding or the succeeding symbol for linguistic sequence. When presented looking like writing, the study of such sequence of symbols is called symbolography. The symbols could be read either from left to right or from right to left. They mean the same as each symbol denotes specific data related to rituals. It matches with the accessories used in Yagna as detailed in Yajurveda. An inquiry into why they were represented like symbols revealed that the script of Vedic Sanskrit was yet to evolve. Vedas were propagated only through oral traditions. But the recitation of Vedic sansas in a perfect way was mandatory. Measures were adopted through coded symbols in the seals to convey the vast ritual based knowledge. They were of great use only to the priests initiated into the Vedic shiksha because they received training in both recitational and performance fields of yagna. I present slide seven. I now proceed to the fish design inscribed as a symbol in the seals. Some symbols are in the shape of the belly of a fish and some symbols are like the stylized fish symbol that are repeatedly seen in seals. Interestingly, they observe perfect geometrical construction of circle geometry. The knowledge of geometry of structures Kshetra Ganita, as it was called, was followed in Vedic period. Geometry was required for the construction of the bricks of altars and other constructions. The measurements were contained in the ancient post-Vedic text on Vedic mathematics called Sulba Sutra. It means geometry was a well-established subject and observed in every construction during Vedic period the knowledge of uh, which got documented later. 
The compilation of Bodhayana Sulva Sutra dates back to around 8th to 5th century BCE. It has reference to Meena, the fish design, as the geometrical construction. Shulba means to measure. The tools used in the ancient period were a pin, a cord, a measuring tape, or a rope for the perimeters called Raju. And the scale was a bamboo piece with, a, with measured holes. The perfection in different measurements that can be seen in Indus Valley sites are according to geometrical measurements. Geometrical shapes, the square, rectangle, trapezium, circles, or inscribed as miniature symbols on seals are also in perfect measurements. I realize that many symbols are geometric constructions only when I enlarge the picture and try to follow the design construction with a compass following the explanation of Saraswati Amma. Now, Coming to the geometry of Pina, the fish belly design from circle geometry. In philosophical terms, uh, in a philosophical perspectives, the circles represent the power of mystic holders. The construction method is draw a circle with A as center and mark the diameter B, A, C. Now with C as center, draw another cloning circle and mark the intersection points of circles as X and Y. Now, A, Y, C, X is called Bina that resembles the shape of the belly of a fish or the almond shape that stands to represent the sacred space in general. It is popularly called Mandola in Italian language. Bodha in the Silva Sutra, chapter 1.1. 22 to 25 explains that the geometric construction of Meena, the fish belly design, is from two circles called mandalas of the same diameter when they overlap. The center of one circle lies on the circumference of the other. It results in a fish belly design, which in later texts on geometry was called Meena in Sanskrit. This geometry of Meena with overlapping circles creating a frame for sacred space has been used in many symbols of indices to convey the space of heaven and earth. This Meena shape was also used to make containers to offer oblations to God. Now we can observe how the basic design of Meena is in various forms with appendages or multiple figures. They all represent a constant value of sacred space. Also, a container in this shape is prescribed to hold auspicious offerings to deities. I present some symbols that are variants of Pina design. The terminologies given to symbols are from the book, the Dictionary of Vedic Rituals based on Shrauta and Grihya Sutras by Chitrabhanu Sen. I present slide eight. The basic design of Meena is used both as single structure and the interlaced double structure. Firstly, I present only symbols with single Meena structure. The first picture is the representation of a ritual called Indra Thuriya. The Vedic story related is when Prajapati distributed the wealth to all three worlds, there was a fight from demons and they troubled humans from all four sides. Indra and Akti consulted each other and decided to hurl thunderbolts on them. God of fire, Agni, indicated that he would cover three sides, while Indra would cover the fourth top side called Thuriya. Thus, three shares of oblation of the cave offered to the two deities, Indra and Agni, made of pounded grains called Purodasha, were for Agni, and the one-fourth part, Turiya, was for Indra. Hence, the name of Indra, hence the name Indra Turiya for this ritual. And this is depicted as a symbol in the seal. The drawing of uh, dividing one-fourth and three-fourths in the symbol observes geometrical construction. Indra Turiya is almond-shaped symbol, indicative of a ritual performance in Somayagna, 
to invoke Indra and Agni along with the chanting of mantras by four trees. The second picture is called Palasha Patra. It is a container made of Palasha wood. It is used to place the three pindas, that is rice offerings for pitrus or mains of all three generations and offered in Dakshin Agni fire during Mahapitru Yagna. The seal depicting this Palasha Patra symbol had only one other symbol, which was the bow shaped altar of Dakshin Agni. This indicates food cooked for Pitrus in Dakshin Agni and offered in Palasha Patra. The third picture is a floating spoon without a handle called Pariplava. Offering was made to deity Soma, eulogized as the god of Buddhi. Soma is indicated by the Soma twig inside the Pariplava Patra. The container is made of Vikantaka wood. It is used to draw Soma juice from the big container called Drona Kalasha. The four strokes on four sides of the symbol indicate oblations offered to consorts of deities. The fourth symbol represents Vedic deity Apanampath, which is described in Rigveda. Apanampath is a form of Agni latent in rainwater like lightning. This symbol is represented in seals with an agricultural theme. Appa is rainwater. Sky is shown in the top part of the symbol in Meena design as a sacred place. But is that water which falls? It enters, it enters all the moving and non-moving ones like plants and animals and moves further within. It fills the plot for those and gives good returns from trees and plants. The symbol is a compound design of three units, the sky on top, the furrows, and the base plume. I present slide nine now. Now we can look into the symbols where two interlaced Mina designs are depicted in seals. Before this, it will be interesting to know the geometric construction of overlapping Mina designs. The construction method is draw two overlapping circles with center points as A and C. These circles intersect at points P and Q to get the MENA design P, A, Q, C. Now, Z is the midpoint of the radius of the first circle A, C. And point F is the midpoint of the radius of the second circle C, D. With Z and F as centers and keeping the same radius, draw two arcs on circles and mark the intersecting points as R and S. Now, P, A, Q, C and R, Z, F, S are the two interlacing MENA designs in almond shape that are symbolic of heaven and earth. In between these spaces is a small Veena design emerged that represents the mid zone sky or the firmament. I present slide 10 now for the variants of dual structures of Meena pattern. The first symbol of variant pictures in this category is the representation of the Vedic deity, Dhyava Prithvi. Each each of the Meena or almond shaped frame refers to sacred space. Rigveda Mandala 1.164.33 quotes about the most ancient pair. Dhyayus, heaven is my father, my begetter, kinship is here. This great earth is my mother and king. Between the widespread world halves is the birthplace of firmament, the sky. When two similar Meena designs representing heaven and earth are overlap, a smaller Meena pattern in between appears that represents firmament. Those the structure for both are the same for heaven and earth. Heaven represents the male principle or the father and earth represents the feminine principle, the mother. This concept of circle geometry is personified into deities and in total, it is the symbol of Vedic goddess, Dhyava Prithvi. 
Another philosophical expression of Dhyava Prithvi symbol is the representation of cosmic womb of Aditi, the earth goddess. Now the second symbol represents Mithuna. Mithuna is the intertwining of integration of two almond shaped designs to symbolize the union of male and female principles at human level. The Vedic ritual Vishuvat or the spring solstice is a great observance called Mahavrata. On the previous day of solstice, several sports events were enjoyed. Mithuna is one of the acts of Mahavrata where a man and woman, both strangers, are involved in sexual union in the sacred shed called Parishrita. The union of heaven and earth after being created by Vishwakarma was conceived as the act of cosmic union at macrocosmic level. This was glorified and mimicked at microcosmic level in the copulation of man and woman who are strangers. This is symbolically depicted in a seal as Mithuna symbol and the other symbols of the seal correlate with the details of Mahavrata ritual. I present slide 11 now. The third picture is the two Mina designs, one inside the other. It is a symbolic representation of Smashana for cremation. Many seals show the symbol of Smashana. Smashana is depicted as two Mina designs, big and small, one inside the other. Smashana is a place where death rituals are performed. It is indicative of the movement of the dead physical body from matter to spirit life. And hence, a smashana was also considered as a sacred space. It is getting back to the garbha of earth goddess. This journey is indicated through a symbol of smashana that is deeply embedded in world culture. Mathematics and geometry can take beyond the ordinary limits to the cosmic depths and hence are considered sacred geometry. Smashana, an elevated place for cremation, was measured using cords and pegs outside the village. The human figure giving measurements is always present in, a, in all seals with Smashana theme. Uh, the supportive figure at the base is for the concept of understanding that the symbol of Smashana was derived from the philosophical perspective worked out by scholars and mathematicians. This supporting picture derives that this symbol is designed like going deeper into the earth, which is the representation of Smashana. I present slide 12 now to understand the construction of drawing of uh, Smashana. We can look into the geometry involved in the Smashana construction. Again, it's a series of overlapping circles and arcs as shown in the picture. The perfect curves of two Mina designs, big and small, to represent Smashana in the seal can happen only with the curved and peg measurement. I present slide 13. This picture shows three Mina patterns in one symbol. It refers to Agnagara, the five sanctuary. It is constructed to the west of Mahavedi, half inside and half outside the Mahavedi, as can be seen in the seal picture. The symbol shows three smaller Mina designs in a row embedded within one big half fish or the Mina symbol. This half Mina is called half fish structure in Chapter 8 of Upper Stamba Shulba Sutra. Atnagara is to separate the three fires in a shed which are preserved. It is also called Agnishala, meaning the sanctuary of fires. The three sacrificial fires called the Ahavaniya, Gharapatya, and Dakshinagni are preserved in the fire sanctuary. It just represents the area allotted for preserving these fires in Agnagara and not the specific construction of the shape of the three altars. 
The measurement of space between them is again a geometrical construction using a chord that is Raju to establish perfect space measurement. Usually, establishing a file in a way is done only once, and the file thus installed must be maintained by a priest called Agnitra. If the installed fire gets extinguished, Prayaschitta Homa has to be performed. The three fires, Garapatya, Ahavaniya, and Dakshinani fires are represented in the seal as a symbol. Now I proceed to the symbol of stylized fish and its variants, which is a derivative of Mina geometry. I present slide 14. According to Shubha Sutra, when Meena design further overlaps with arcs of same radius, the figure of stylized fish emerges. There are over eight to nine stylized fish variants in seals, of which I discuss only five. Before that, it is required to know the stylized fish was structured geometrically from uh, Meena geometry. We now know about X, A, Y, C as Mina. From points X and Y, draw two arcs A, B, C and A, U, C with the same radius. These arcs A, U, C and A, V, C are on the diameter of the line B, A, C. Create the stylized fish shape as a derivative which is described in Sulva Sutra. It says the lenticular portion common to the two intersecting circles has roughly the shape of a fish. I magnified the picture of Meena figure and tried to construct the stylized fish geometry with a compass, which I have presented in this slide. The Italian term for this geometry of fish is Vesica Pisces, also called Ichthyus, the fish in Italian language. I present slide 15 now. Many seals have even three stylized fish in a row. The single horned bull seal and the other pictures in slide 15 has three symbols of fish lined up with variations. Fish is water animal and the fish symbol is indicative of water or liquid medium. While analyzing the rational aspect of this repetition of three specific designs, I found the fourth mandala, 58th Sutta of Rig Veda, had stanzas on the significance of milk and its three products, uh, that is hot milk, curds, and ghee. A comparative work between Rig Veda, mandala 4.58, and the bull seal pictures with three fishes gave the clue that Sacred liquid milk is metaphorically and symbolically represented as a stylized fish in the sea. All forms of milk products were the essential ingredients of yagna because Vedic gods favored them. Rigveda Mandala 4.58 has 11 stanzas in place of milk and ghee. Ghee was called Gritta, which was the favorite food of Agni. The related story in Rigveda is that Panis, the wicked demon, had stolen the cows and concealed them. With this, the yagnas could not be performed because milk was lacking. The universe suffered as it depended on milk as food also. Indra, Surya, and Agni fought with the demon and recovered the wealth of cows and restored the performance of Soma yagnas. Then each of the three gods discovered the three products of milk liked by them. That is hot milk, curds and ghee in triple shapes and were, that were created by their own power. The fourth stanza of Rig Veda 4.58 quotes, Indra Ekam, Surya Ekam Jajana, Vena Ekam Swadhaya Nishtatakshuhu. It means after recovering the cows from the demon, the gods discovered the triple shape of milk. Indra saw in one shape, Surya saw another form, uh, and the third form was from Vena. Vena is Agni. Milk or Dugda in Sanskrit flowed like rapid river rushing 
which Indra liked. Surya in the sky liked the milk in the form of curds called Samnaya in Sanskrit. The clarified butter, Krita, flowed like holy oil stream in the Yagnas that deity Agdi relished. All three forms of milk were used as habis, the sacrificial oblations in the Yagnas, to these gods. The three auspicious variants of milk products are represented in the sea like three variants of stylized fish. Of the eight nine variants of stylized fish, I present five symbols. The first three stylized fish are seen in the bull sea. And its comparison and analysis is made exactly on the list of milk products, respectively, as said in Rigveda. This clue is thus a correlation of literary and archaeological sources. The first fish symbol of the seal is milk, followed by curds and ghee. I present slide 16 now. Variants of a stylized fish symbol. Uh, the first picture represents milk, a symbol of milk, that is sacred liquid. Milk uh, called Dugda or Shira is an essential dravya, a liquid oblation, and all its derivatives were also offered to deities. Stylized fish symbol with a dot in the center represents milk, which Indra liked. Milk was the most sacred liquid in ancient Hindu culture, which is symbolically depicted as stylized fish with a dot. This analysis is based on the correlation of Rigvedic stanza to the steel picture. Picture two is Samnaya, the curdled milk. To put together a mixture of freshly boiled milk and the sour milk of the preceding night for curdling makes Samnaya, which is curds that deity Surya, the sky god liked. While the heating is indicated in symbols as a top cover on fish. The inverted design on the upper part of fish is to represent curdled and cool state. It is called Samnaya, an important liquid oblation to deity Surya. Picture three is Ajya, the ghee. When butter is heated and clarified, it is called Ajya, Kruta, or ghee, symbolized in many seals by a fish symbol with a horizontal stroke in the middle. Liquid ghee is also called sarpis, is used in cooking as well as in the anti-HD death rituals. The analysis of this symbol is, I repeat, it is according to the third state of milk as said in Rigveda and as depicted to be the third fish design in the sea. I proceed to fourth picture, the boiled or hot milk. Symbol of boiled milk or hot milk is indicated as a top cover on the fish symbol. May also be indicative of pravargya, the boiling milk ritual. Hot milk in inscription part of the seal may also indicate about it being consumed as the only food during observance of vrata, that is the religious observances. The performer of the vrata was permitted to consume only hot milk as food. This symbol hints that the top angled cover above the fish is symbolic of heated milk. Now, fifth picture. Fifth is Agni Vaishwanara. Vaishwanara Agni is the unseen and unborn form of fire, latent and hidden in all the living beings. Agni is waterborne and latent in waters as seen in lightning and also in wood that grows from water. Vaishwanara is represented like a stylized fish, stylized fish symbol with a vertical stroke in the middle to represent the unborn stage. As the fish symbol uh, symbolizes element water also, and the central rod indicates the five pillar, the skamba. Liquid 1. Mandala 1.59.1 quotes about Agni Vaishwanara. Center are the Vaishwanara of the people, sustaining men like deep founded pillar. 
Agni in this form is Vaishvanara, which is the thermal heat aspect of Agni. He is related to the fire of digestion in the stomach. He is therefore the sustainer of life force called Prana. I present slide 17 now. It is the depiction of Hothri and Hothraka priest. This representation has a number sequence and hence it's not a geometrical construction. Hothri refers to one of the four principal priests belonging to Rig Veda. He recites the stanzas of Rig Veda in Yagnas to invoke gods and also pours the oblation. In the seal picture, the priest Hothri has a seat below him called Dishnya, which indicates that he was earlier in a sitting posture and offering melted ghee. After offering the main oblation of ghee as Ajya Bhaga, he stands and pronounces the mystical utterances Vashat Mantra loudly at the end. Vashat is always uttered in a standing posture called Yajati as depicted in the second symbol of the seal picture. The chief Hothri announces the designated names of his assistants, the Hothrakas, who also join him in uttering Vashat mantras. They are called Vashat Kartris. After this mystical utterance, all oblations are poured into the fire. The main Hothri has a definite number of assistants called Hothrakas in Yagnas. The number of uh, priests partaking in a ritual varies between 4 to 10 or even 16 and differ from one yagna to other. In the indices, the main hotri or hotraka is depicted in a standing posture holding a post upright like a mast. The spikes on the post attached shows number of assistant hotrakas participating with him. The symbol looks like a post made of timber or mass, a structure held by the Hothri in his right hand. The number of assistants are called Chatur Hothris, the Pancha Hothri, the Shad Hothri, the Sapta Hothri, Ashta Hothri, Dasha Hothri, and so on. In the last picture, the Hothri is holding the post of Chatur Hothris. It is to indicate the names of four principal priests, Agnidra, Advaryu, Hotri, and Brahmana, belonging to the four Vedas, who are present in the Yagna. All four are required in certain rituals of Dasha Purnamasa, the full moon and new moon rituals. The post accessory, uh, this post like accessory shows the number of Hotrikas reciting the Vashat Mantras, which is an important ritual in the end part of Yagna. Still 18 shows the variants of Hothri depiction. I present seal 18, that is for assistant uh, Hothrakas. First picture is Pancha Hothri, that is five priests. The morning session of uh, Soma Yagna has five Hothri priests participating, which is indicated in a symbolic form. The second picture is Shad Hothris, the six priests. They are required in Pashu related ritual or while an animal is sacrificed. The third picture is Saptahotris or present in the third pressing of Soma Yagna or in Pravargya rituals. They are represented as seven men in a row in the seal in the personified form of Saptahotris. Fourth picture represents Ashtahotris, the eight priests who participate in the post death ritual. I present slide 19. It's for the representation of Dasha Hotris. Dasha Hotris are the 10 Hotris identified with 10 different objects that are offered as oblation. 10 priests participate in a big fire ritual like installation of a new fire altar. The proof of this reading is in the seal picture marked red, where a bird altar. Sena Chiti is indicated in the seal. This seal is excavated from Dholavira. The last picture has another circular fire altar, the round shaped Gharapatya fire altar. 
marked in red color. Both seals are related to fire altar installation where Dashahotris participate. Now, coming to conclusion, uh, several themes such as the purpose of making the seals, the class of people using them and the distribution of seals have been analyzed. The variations from the base design conveying different meanings are also analyzed. Each of the seal symbol has a unique definition, the interpretation of which is such that they hold the same meaning in whichever seal they appear. I have tried to present a categorized understanding of some symbols of Indus seals along with their geometrical constructions wherever applicable. Deciphering the symbols has been tough because some symbols are repeated in many seals while some symbols appear to be one and only representation. Vedic literature, Vedic rituals, and social pattern of life in Vedic period, when considered, will provide a consistent and meaningful interpretation of the theme of the seals. Many discussions are there regarding the reasons for the disappearance of this great ancient civilization of Bharat. I believe it never disappeared, but flowed like underground river in the infinite liter literary and archaeological and religious heritage of Bharat, and it continues to flow in this land. Sanatana Dharma is a continuum of Vedic civilization. The Homas and Yagnas and death rituals are still practiced, and the priests still recite the Vedic stanzas in a flawless way. I have attempted to share the complex symbols through a Vedic perspective. I thank all the participants for the patient listening. Also, uh, I proceed to slide 20. Also, those who are interested to know more may refer my books on Indus Valley Seals that are available both as ebook and paperback on Amazon. Thank you.